Should they do more while people are still in uniform to begin this transition period instead of, you know, sometimes you get the impression that you, know, you muster out, you get your papers, it's like right. you got out of prison. Here, here's a right. bus ticket, you know. Right. Yeah. Well, if you get out of prison, you probably get a more comprehensive transition plan. <laughs> um, if, if you come out of Rikers Island, you're going to get, uh, you know, uh, you're going to get, first of all, there's transitional housing available. Uh, <laughs> there are other programs available. You're going to get a parole officer. You're going to have someone who's looking out for you on the way out. And for many folks, you know, you're in Baghdad one week and in Brooklyn the next. So I, th I think the, the Department of Defense has done a lot more. And they have really made tremendous progress in the last few years. Um, and, you know, TAP has been reformed. The transition program has now been reformed, and that's starting to circulate through. But, but uh, until recently, that program really hadn't been updated in a couple decades. So for a, a guy getting out like me, it felt like uh, just a PowerPoint briefing. You know, they would call it death by PowerPoint. And you'd get this kind of pencil-whipped uh, briefing, and then you discharge, and then you're kind of on your own. But I think the nonprofit space has been stepping up. The private sector, DOD and VA, have made a lot of headway in the last few years. The First Lady's Office deserves credit for raising this to a national level of visibility. And I think that's, that's really created a groundswell. You know, Kevin Schmeagel's here from the chamber and is going to be on the panel afterward. And I think the chamber has been out in front on this issue. And, and they're one of the few groups that were on veterans' employment before it became popular. Uh, and now it's become popular, and that's a good thing. You know, people understand the value of a veteran, and, and they're starting to figure out how to incorporate veterans into their corporate culture, which I think is the real um, end state for us. We want every company to have a veterans component, right? To, have a, 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 to understand that value of a person who's disciplined and hardworking and focused and technically skilled and has good values and has shine shoes and a good haircut, right? You want those people uh, injected into your company, and you want people to hire veterans, not because they're a charity, but because they're an investment. Right, and I think that's starting to happen now. Uh, and Department of Defense still got a long way to go. VA still got a long way to go. But I think in the last two years especially, there's been a lot of progress. Well, but back to DOD. Let me, yeah. let me push back a little yeah, bit on that. Please. Is there, is there a mixed message that the Department of Defense is giving its, its people? And for a, reason, a good reason. They're worried about retention. If, you, if you've got people in uniform and they've rotated out of Afghanistan or Iraq or Korea or Germany yeah. and they're back at Fort Bragg um, and you say, okay, here's, your, here's how your mm -hmm. skills translate and you have a whole, serv a whole a lot of service, you know, um, education for them to understand yeah. how to translate, how to give interviews, do all these things that we think they ought to do. Maybe then they think, well, I don't need to be in the service anymore. And is, well, there, is, think, the, is the Department of well, Defense worried about losing people that wants they, to maybe keep Maybe they are, but I think that would be short-sighted. I think, you know, most folks don't stay in for 25 years, you know, especially nowadays a lot of folks get in, and especially National Guardsmen and Reservists, they may only want to do five or ten years and then get out and go back to school or do something else. Um, but, but I also think that, um, you know, there, there's been a recognition that they're going to get out at some point anyway, so you might as well set them up for the skills that are going to help them be successful. Um, and also... You know, if they stay in, those skills are still going to suit them well, right? If you train someone to be a good public speaker and to be, do good time management and to interview well, those are skills that are going to help people do well in the military. But also, let's be honest, the military is shrinking. So, you know, retention is going to be less and less of a problem in, in maybe the next five to ten years ahead. We've got sequester kicking in now. So I think there's a lot of uncertainty for people in the military that wasn't there a few years before. So we've got to be uh, smart and also cost effective because if the DOD has to pay unemployment insurance uh, and there are other costs associated with unemployment vets, that's not going to make smart fiscal sense either.